Regarding Ashagwa's position in government and especially the Kenya Kwanza government is something that is under something would term as wars or under siege or in the famous of the former police boss under Siege. This is after Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja being the latest entrant in the race of uh, tarnishing Rigadi as a bully and labeling him as a bully within the national politics and within the management of the Kenya Kwanza affairs. Welcome to the Bold Analysis. My name is Frank Odor. Sakaja today made unleashing, uh, unleashed rather, scathing attacks on the deputy president Rigadi Gashagwa and termed his as termed Rigadi rather as a bully. And Sakaja spoke strongly and said that he was elected by the people of Nairobi and somebody should not be bullying him anyhow. This continues to add on Rigadi's problems that have been witnessed in the recent weeks and especially on his relationship with uh, William Ruto is the president. But the problem here, uh, before we get to the problem rather, I would like us to listen to Johnson Sakaja speaking today during a delegates conference of UDA members in Nairobi. Johnson Sakaja. But I beg to disagree with Johnson Sakaja. Yes, they are terming Rigadi Gashagwa Sabuli, but uh, you would notice that the problem that Rigadi Gashagwa is facing is as a result of a problem between him and his boss, William Ruto. And should not now be dragged to a level problem of Rigadi Gashagwa and other leaders within the country. He is also human. In as much as he might be a bully, but then everybody now should not be turning their dogs on to Rigadi Gashagwa. And Sakaja, Johnson Sakaja speaking today, what he did was a work well cut out such that he could contribute into something that some people within the UD have engineered towards character assassinating Rigadi Gashagwa. And during the day, I saw a tweet that is on X by one lawyer, Donald Kip Korir, saying that whatever is happening to Rigadi Gashagwa right now is just a payback of what Rigadi Gashagwa did to other leaders like Uhuru Kenyatta. That whatever he used to do to other leaders is now what is now coming back to haunt him. And uh, now, what I asked myself immediately is why is Rigadi Gashagwa being termed or labeled as a bully? Why is he really being labeled as a bully? And is he really a bully? Now, some of the reasons as to why he could be, it could be that he is being labeled as a bully is that these politicians who are labeling Rigadi Gashagwa as a bully they want to spell a narrative and gain national traction that Rigadi Gashagwa is actually a bully. And they want to use this to fight Rigadi Gashagwa. Said so that Rigadi would be somebody who can be easily certain, if for lack of a better word. So they want to spin this into a national narrative such so that everybody else will be buying their character assassination plots and the terms that they are using on Rigadi Gashagwa as a bully. This one, if they can succeed in this, then it would even dissuade some of the members that are still alienated to him to actually jump onto the other side of the divide. And so that Rigadi can be seen as somebody who is difficult to work with. Another reason as to why they are using this narrative of Rigadi Gashagwa being actually a bully is that they want to show that Rigadi is actually the problem in this uh, conflict that might be existing between him and his boss, Ruto. They want to show that he is the problem here. So when they use terms such as a bully, somebody who is difficult to work with, somebody who is difficult for him to comprehend simple things and simple manners, simple issues, then they would be actually succeeding in portraying Rigadi as the actual problem and not Ruto. So, to the engineers of this plot, they know and they are very much aware that if Rigadi Gashagwa's names, uh, name rather, goes down along with Ruto's name, that it is actually Ruto who is causing problem to Rigadi, 
then Ruto would actually be seen as a betrayer. Contrary to he, what he said in the past that he would not like to see his deputy going through what he underwent in the previous regime. So this is something that seems to be well orchestrated and well calculated such that they would be able to actually lift the blame from Ruto's shoulders and put it on Rigabe's shoulders. Another reason as to why they are trying to push this narrative of Rigabe being a bully is that the person who spoke today, that is Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja, he seems to be somebody, to be like somebody who is seeking mileage against uh, Gakuya, who is the Ambakasi North Member of Parliament, Joyce Gakuya. He's kind of uh, seeking some mileage because Gakuya is among the point men who are currently really defending Rigadi. And Gakuya has made it clear that his intention is to contest and vie for the uh, chairmanship of UDA party in Nairobi. This is the very same position that Sakaja has also maintained that he is also eyeing the position and he really wants the position. Even today, the way he was addressed, the way he went to that delegates conference, very hyped. He's ready for this. So there is a political battle between Gakuya and Sakaja. So Sakaja in his mind, he knows that if he terms regarding a bully, and Gakuya is somebody who is working closely with uh, Rigadi, then people would rather otherwise consider Gakuya for the chairmanship position would buy the narrative that these two, they can only work as a pair if they have the same character. And also still on this, you know, this chairmanship of UDN Nairobi, it will really be determinant on who will be the ticket holder for UDA party or the Kenya Kwanza party, if it shall have been successful in registering as a single political party come 2027, on who will be the ticket holder for the gubernatorial race in Nairobi. So, if Gakuya successfully becomes the chairman, then it means that Sakaja's second term will be under siege. That is why Sakaja is really fighting to have the chairmanship. Once he has the chairmanship, then it would be easy for him to get the ticket to defend his seat as the Nairobi governor come 2027. So this is a space that will be exciting to watch and Sakaja will really be maximizing on his onslaught attacks against Rigadi. That is in as far as the chairmanship of UDA party in Nairobi is concerned. And you've seen the likes of Gakuya and other leaders that are alienated to Rigadi coming out and saying that Sakaja is not doing what he's supposed to be doing in Nairobi. So, it is a battle of wits, it's a battle of politics centered and geared towards 2027 and not what is currently happening. Another thing, still on Sakaja, Sakaja really, if I was to be honestly asked, asked rather, in his mandate that he promised the uh, citizens of Nairobi country that he'll be delivering, Sakaja has not yet still delivered according to what he was telling the Nairobians during the gubernatorial debates and or when even he was selling his manifesto. There is still a lot that he needs to do. We know that it's two years, but then a period of three years, uh, basically, we are saying that the maximum number of years that he can enjoy working going forward is maybe one year. After that one year, when we are in the third year, now getting to the fourth and fifth year, it will be years of politic, uh, politicking and everybody is tr uh, trying to solidify their bases around their electoral uh, colleges. So, if there is a time for Sakaja to work, it's right now and next year probably. So, to Sakaja and even some of his critics, they've come out in the open and have said that Sakaja has failed to deliver on his mandate. Just come to the city of Nairobi if you think that maybe some people are accusing Sakaja falsely. Then just watch for yourself. We don't want you to make a conclusion. But then you already have the conclusion. You'll be able to judge by yourself. Or even if you are a resident of this Nairobi country, then you can be able to actually judge for yourself and gauge as to whether Sakaja has delivered successfully or not. So 
it might have actually dawned on him that he might be a one term governor he might be a one term governor in nairobi you know nairobi also has the jinx of having one term governors since the introduction of the county system or the county level of government uh, kidero became the governor of nairobi on a one term he tried defending it he failed mike sonko became the governor of nairobi on a one term and now we have johnson arthur sakaja so it might actually have dawned on him that he might actually be joining the list of the one term governors jinx in nairobi and also still based on this these leaders from mount Ke uh, from mount kenya sorry have made it clear that come 2027 they would like one of their own to be the governor of this country of nairobi so if they want one of them to be the uh, governor of the county of Nairobi so and the majority of them are people who are maybe or not even a majority of them rather but rather we say that you know come 2027 the politics at play as things are going Mount Kenya might actually be able to be behind one of their very own and in the instance that it happens that they are behind regarding the Gashagwa then it means that they would push for their candidate using whatever political formation that regard might come with and that might not work well for sakaja so he can do he must do anything now towards destabilizing or character assassinating regarding that one sakaja must also have learned that so that is why it wasn't difficult for him to join that bandwagon of uh, the character assassinations and name callings on regarding shagwa Thank you for watching. That marks the end of our analysis. I would like to remind you to continue subscribing to our YouTube uh, channel. That is, if in case you are new here, you can turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever we upload new content. Thank you.